All right, so Wednesday, you guys are going to have a test over the stuff that we've been going over, over slope intercept form, standard form, pulling slope form, the slope formula. Um, but we also are going to go back and talk about linear regressions as well, because there was a little piece of information that we initially didn't talk about that we're going to now talk about today. So today, linear regressions and correlation. Tomorrow, review. Wednesday, your test. All right, so I'm gonna go ahead and share my screen with you guys so you can see the notes. All right, what we're gonna do is we're gonna do two of these problems together as a class on the front page um, because it should be a refresher and then we're gonna focus mainly on the second part of the notes um, today, okay? So the data in the table below shows the average temperature in northern latitudes. So we have a bunch of latitudes and we have their corresponding temperature, all right? So remember, whenever you're given a table, the first row is always going to be your X values, and the second row is going to be your Y values. What we're gonna do is we're going to find the line of best fit by using our Desmos. So hopefully this starts to sound a little bit familiar. What we're gonna do is we're gonna put in each of these points into our table. So for instance, we have the point 0, 079. That right there is an ordered pair. So the X value is zero, the Y value is 79. We are going to fill in all of these values into our Desmos table, okay? So let me open up my Desmos. And where is it? There it is, there's our Desmos. So here's our table right here. We have zero as my X value and 79 as my Y value. Now you might say, wait a second, Coach Easton, why can't I see that point? Well, the point zero, 79 would be all the way up here. And we could change the table if we want to um, take a look at the data. But that's not the main thing we're gonna focus on today. The main thing that we're gonna focus on today is we are going to find our um, equation. That's essentially, sorry, we're going to find our equation. That's what we're looking for. Okay. All right. Next, we're going to plug in our remaining points, 10 and 81. Then we have 20, sorry, 20, 79, a latitude of 30 has a temperature of 68, a temp or latitude of 40 has a temperature of 58, a latitude of 50 has a temperature of 43 and 60 as my latitude has a temperature of 28 70 as my latitude has a temperature of 13 and then my last point 80 has a fahrenheit of one. Oh, one degree fahrenheit that'd be terrible all right so now that we have our points put in there i want you guys to scroll down sorry i want you guys to scroll down because Remember, our equation in slope-intercept form is y equals mx plus b. And this has found a couple of things for us, but the main things we are going to focus on, the main things that are review, is it has found m for you, and it has found b for you as well. So I'm going to go back to the notes. Actually, I'm going to copy these down real quick. Just oh, I don't have to keep bouncing back and forth. m is negative 1.0716 and B is equal to 92.8667. So now on our notes, we can write the equation of the line of best fit by plugging in M and plugging in B into our Y equals MX plus B equation. So remember, this is the equation in slope intercept form. Why am I using slope intercept form? Well, because we have our slope now and we have our Y intercept. So our equation is gonna be y equals negative 1.07167 times x, times x, and then plus 92.8667, okay? All right, so part b is the one that we initially kind of struggled on when we were going over these problems, but hopefully now they make a little bit more sense. Estimate the average temperature, so we wanna find the temperature for a city with a latitude of 48. So notice they want us to plug in 48 into this problem, but are we gonna plug it in for X or are we gonna plug it in for Y? And here's how easy it is to tell. 
48, is that the latitude or is that the temperature? Well, it says latitude and latitude were our X values. So we're gonna take our equation and we're gonna plug in 48 for X. So Y equals negative 1.07167 times X, but instead of X, we're gonna times by 48 plus 92.8667. All right, and now we can use our calculators. Um, I know a lot of you guys don't have Inspires at home. That's okay. We can use any calculator, including Google. I'm just going to use my phone calculator right here. So I had some math in there from stats. So we have um, negative, ooh, sorry, sorry, sorry. We have 1.6, sorry, 1.07, oh my goodness, 1.07167 times 48. But remember, I know this is negative because it's a negative number times a positive number. So that's negative 51.44016. So if we want to do negative numbers, you definitely have the ability to do that. Um, we're gonna do negative right there, 51.44016. Oh, that is not what I was trying to do. Sorry, I still have these locked in here from earlier. But essentially, we're going to do negative 51.44016 plus 92.8667, which I got a math trick, 92.8667 minus 51.44016. So we get 41.4. So we would guess that the temperature would be 41.4. Now I want you guys to kind of pause here and see if that answer makes sense, okay? So notice we plugged in 48 for our latitude. Go back to our table. Where is 48 at? 48 is right there. And we got an answer of 41.4. So that fits in pretty close to that point right there. So I think that's a pretty solid answer. What I want you guys to do is I want you guys to go back to the Desmos activity and for question number two, for question number two, I want you guys to go ahead and find the line of best fit. Then once you find the line of best fit, I want you to plug in 250 people and where should we plug in people? Should we plug it in for X or Y? Well, people are my passengers, so you're going to plug in 250 for X. Go ahead and pause the video and I want you guys to try that for me. Use the Desmos, then use your calculator to find the answer and then come back to me. All right, so coming back here, this is what we should have got. Now, this time I gotta be honest, I got tired of writing all those decimals. So I just rounded to the second decimal place. I rounded to the hundredth place. So we got Y equals 1.98X plus 7.97 because my slope was 1.98 and my y-intercept, my b was 7.97. Then we plugged in 250 people for x because x was my passengers. And when I plug that in, we actually get 502 bags. Um, actually, we got 502.97 bags, but you can't have 0.97 of a bag, so I went ahead and rounded it to 503. Why did we not round earlier? Because temperatures can actually be Decimals, you can have 0.4 of a degree, but you can't have 0.97 of a bag. So we needed to round there. All right, um, I wanted to also go through and I wanted you guys to go ahead and try question number four. Question number four is a little bit different because instead of giving you guys a table, they went ahead and gave you the scatter plot. But all you need to do for a scatter plot is just identify all of these points. So this point right here has an X value of 90 and a Y value of four. So you have the point 90 comma four. All right, what about this point right here? Well, be careful because of our scales. This is directly in between 90 and 94. So that would be 92. And then look at our scale for our Y axis. This is directly between four and five. So that should be a height, a Y value of 4.5 or four and a half. So what you guys are gonna do is you're gonna find the ordered pair for each of these points. You're going to plug them into your Desmos and find your line of best fit. That's where I want you to pause, okay? So again, pause the video and try that out for yourself. 
And then let's see if we get the same line of best fit. Okay, so I actually wanted to go back and talk about this one for a second because actually some of the points that we were using, um, it wasn't gonna work out because I was trying to be lazy essentially. And instead of using the actual year, I was trying to use 90 instead of 1990. And instead of 90 or 1992, we got, or instead of 92, we got to use 1992. So if we didn't do that, I want you to go back and try that again. And actually, I'm going to show you guys what the equation should look like or what your Desmos should look like. Okay. So let me share my Desmos. So actually, instead of just 90 comma four, I want you to put 1990 because we would have ran into the issue right here if you put 2000 in and if you had accidentally put zero, zero in, this wouldn't have had the right answer, okay? So my equation should be y equals 0.17x, and then my b here, sorry, I had the wrong b, my b should be negative 340.383. All right, so that's what my equation should have looked like. But instead of answering b, what I want you guys to do is I want you to see in the Desmos that it has found a couple of other things for us. The main things that we're gonna focus on today is R. So the R value is 0.96. What I want you guys to do is flip over and I want you guys to write your value of R here, 0.96. So there was the equation once we actually had it written. What is the value of R? R is equal to 0.96. Now, what the heck is R? What has it found for us? R is called the correlation coefficient. It is the number that represents our correlation. And I want you guys to kind of notice here, R can be anything from negative one up to one. If R is close to one, then that is a strong positive correlation. If R is close to negative one, then it is a strong negative correlation. If we have numbers for R that are close to zero though, that is going to be a weak correlation. So for us, we got an R value of 0.96, which is like right here, it's really, really close to one. So actually we would say there is a what kind of correlation do we have? We would say there is a strong, R was positive, so this is a positive correlation between, and what was our problem all about? Well, our problem is all about the year and the tuition. There is a, so there is a strong positive correlation between the year and tuition. So if you have a positive correlation, what that means is as one variable goes up, the other variable also goes up. So as X gets bigger, Y gets bigger. That's what a positive correlation means. What is a negative correlation? Well, a negative correlation says that as X gets bigger, y is going to do the opposite, y is going to go down. So let's give another example. So we had a positive correlation here. As my year increased, my tuition increased, that's why we had a positive correlation. What's another uh, pair of variables that might have a strong positive correlation? What about height and weight? As height goes up, typically weight goes up. Now guys, correlation doesn't have to be perfect. I know that not everyone who is tall weighs more, but usually if you were to get taller, your weight would also increase as well. So that would have a positive correlation. Can you guys come up with a couple of things? Um, what about, um, I don't know, the bigger the fire? So if my fire size increases, typically we need more firefighters. 
the number of firefighters will increase. All right, what about things that would have a negative correlation? What about things that go in the opposite direction? As one increases, the other decreases. Um, I know the more that I work, the less time I have for um, walking my dogs, the less I get to walk my dogs. So as my work, the amount of time I work goes up, the amount of time that I get to walk my dogs goes down. Um, the more video games you play, more video games, the less time you have to work on your school work. That would be a negative correlation, okay? So variables can have this thing between them called a correlation. The correlation is essentially how well does our line fit our data. If we have a positive correlation, then it is a positive slope. If it's a positive correlation, as X goes up, Y goes up. If it is a negative correlation, we have the opposite. We have a negative slope. As X goes up, Y goes down. Um, the closer we are to one, the stronger the relationship is. The closer we are to negative one, the stronger the relationship is. The closer to zero, the weaker our relationship is. Okay. All right, now I also need to go over a vocab word, causation. Causation means that one of your variables causes the other one, not just that the two variables are correlated. So correlation just means that we have some sort of relationship in between them, whereas causation means that X directly causes Y. And so I think this is kind of a harder topic but I wanna go over a couple of multiple choice questions with you guys and see if we can figure out um, what scenarios are correlation and which ones are causation, okay? So question number nine, which of the following statements shows a relationship that is correlated, but not causal, not a causation? So that means that three of these, the one variable causes the other variable, but we're not trying to find that one. We're trying to find the one where the variables are just correlated. There just appears to be a relationship. All right, the amount of rainfall received and the level of water in the lake. If it rains, does that cause the water level to rise? Yeah, if it rains, that directly causes the water to rise. So A is a causal relationship but we're not looking for a causal relationship. We wanna find the one that is just correlated, all right? The number of lights left on each day and the amount of the electric bill. Does the amount of lights left on cause, if I leave on more lights, does that cause more of an electric bill? Yeah, it does. If you leave those lights on, then yes, that's using electricity. So that causes your electric bill to go up. So that is a cause and effect relationship right there, just like A was, but that's not what we're looking for here. C. That was weird. Sorry, I don't know why that just popped out. Must have been one of my chords. New share. Oh, I clicked the power button, so that was probably uh, the issue there. Let me go ahead and stop that share. Turned it back on, so we should be able to share now. No, still no. There it goes, okay. That's what I was waiting for. Technology nowadays, guys, technology. Okay, goodness. All right, let me zoom in. All right, C, the increase of warm sunny days and the number of ice cream vend vendors visible. So do warm days cause ice cream vendors to come out? I I'm not really sure about this one. I don't think that warm days cause it. I think that warm days make a higher temperature and then a higher temperature means maybe more people are gonna want ice cream, so more ice cream vendors come out. But did you see how many steps there were to get there? It's not just a, this causes this. It's there's a lot of things going into it. So I'm not feeling so very good about C being causation. It might be correlation,
but I don't think that X causes Y. Let's check D, the number of hours worked and how much money is made. So does the amount you work cause more money? Yes, that is directly true. The more you work, if I work more, I make more money. So that is a cause, but I'm looking for a correlation. So C is the best answer choice because even though the two variables here are related, one does not cause the other, and that's what we're looking for. Why don't you guys try number 10? Number 10 is essentially the same question. We're looking for the situation that has our variables correlated, but not that X causes Y. All right, why don't y'all try that out? Pause right here. All right, hopefully you paused. Hopefully you paused, and let's see what we got. All right, so I'm gonna say right now, more tardies, does that cause more detentions? Yes, that is a cause and effect, okay? So A's out. B, the season of the year and the number of water-related injuries. Hmm, that feels like there's a couple steps in between there. So what does the season do? Well, certain seasons are probably warmer. If it's warmer, you're probably likely to go to, I guess, the lake. And if you go to the lake, there may be a chance at more water injuries. That's a lot of steps there. So I'm thinking that B is probably just a correlation. As temperature rises, more mercury in the thermometer will expand and rise. Does temperature, does temp cause mercury to rise? And I don't know if y'all know much about mercury uh, thermometers, but that is exactly what temperature does. Temperature makes mercury expand. So this is definitely a cause and effect relationship, but we don't want a cause and effect relationship. We're looking for the one that's just correlated. The larger the dimensions of a patio, the more square footage. Yeah, if you have bigger size patio, automatically there's going to be more feet, more square footage in that area. So this is also a direct cause. So correlation has a relationship, but there's probably a couple of things that we got to do to get there. Whereas causation, X causes Y. We go directly to that answer, okay? All right, three more. So which of the following this time is a cause? Okay, so this time we're kind of doing the opposite. This time we want a cause and effect. We're looking for X causes Y. All right, an individual decisions to work in construction and his diagnosis of skin cancer. What do those two things even have to do with each other? I guess maybe if you work in construction, you're gonna work more outside. And then if you work more outside, you might have um, more sun, more uh, exposure to the sun. And if you have more exposure to the sun, that seems like a correlation because there was a lot of steps there. All right, so I'm thinking A is out. A decrease in temperature and an increase in attendance at the skate, at skating rink. So if the temperature goes down, temperature goes down, um, I guess, I don't, I don't know. I feel like there's a lot of steps there to get to attendance at a skating ring. So I think that's going to be correlation as well. All right. As a child, weight increases, so does her vocabulary. So if a kid is getting bigger, the vocab is getting better. That, does, that one doesn't even make any sense at all. Like I'm not seeing a relationship there, not even a correlation. That's not a causation core, that's just nothing. That doesn't even make any sense. Last but not least, D, the number of minutes spent exercising and the amount of calories burned. If you spend more exercise, does exercise cause you to burn calories? Yes, that is true. So I'm going to pick D there because this time we are looking for the cause and effect. All right. Um, this one is worded kind of weird. So which statement below might be caused by the statement the more the furnace runs. Okay, so the more the furnace runs, does that cause the less time individuals will spend outside? That doesn't cause that, no. Does the more the furnace runs, furnace, if you're unsure what a furnace is, furnace is like the heat. So the more the heat runs, the longer you will have to let your car warm up. No, because Oh, I, I see what they're trying to say here. If you're running your furnace a lot, it's probably trying to warm up the house. And if you're warming up the house, it's probably because it's cold outside. And if it's cold outside, then you might have to warm up your car a little bit longer. I think that's a correlation, not a causation. Your furnace running does not cause you to have to warm your car up long. All right. Um, the more the furnace runs, the colder it is outside. Um, I think that the furnace running 
is a result of it being cold outside. I don't think the furnace run running causes it to be cold outside. Does the furnace running cause it to be cold outside? No. All right, so I think that's closer, getting closer to the answer, but that's not quite right. Last but not least, the more the furnace runs, does that cause the house to become warmer? That is true. That is true. All right, go ahead and pause. I know that 13 is a little bit longer. I want you to try this out. So consider, a, uh, I want you guys to try it out, okay? Then come back and talk to me. All right, so there is a positive correlation. If it's positive, it means as one goes up, the other goes up. But it is just a correlation, not a causation. So does this mean that we could increase the life expectancy in Rwanda by shipping Nintendo games to that country? Guys, does expectancy, does life expectancy, is that caused by the amount of Nintendo games? Does it, do the Nintendo games cause people to live longer? No, it just seems that for some reason, as one goes up, the other goes up. Okay, so we should not say that this is going to cause people to live longer. So all the answer choices that say yes, they're out. Get rid of those, okay? I also got rid of it makes no sense because whenever you're dealing with uh, two uh, variables that are numbers, you can always find the correlation. It is okay. So let's see which one. If the correlation would, were negative, we could accept that conclusion. No. Correlation can be positive or negative. In this case, it's positive. The positive correlation just shows that the richer countries have more Nintendos and higher life expectancies. Ah, uh, that's what I was looking for. So Nintendos don't cause a higher life expectancy, but usually in countries where there are a whole bunch of Nintendos, that means we got something else, we got some money. And usually if you got money, you have uh, ability to get healthcare. And if you have healthcare, then that increases your life expectancy. So that is a positive correlation. All right, so just to close up shop, the difference between correlation versus causation is that causation means X causes Y, X directly influences Y. X is the reason that Y happens. Whereas correlation, usually there is a couple of steps in between. So this is how I'm gonna write it. Usually there's a couple of steps in between that make it so that X and Y do have a relationship, but there's other things going on that might make their relationship um, appear obvious, okay? All right, so the main thing I wanted to get out of today is not only can you guys come up with a line of best fit, you can also find this thing called the correlation coefficient. The closer it is to one, the stronger it is. The closer it is to negative one, the stronger the relationship is. Um, but if you're in the middle, if you're near zero, that is a weak correlation. And then we also have something called causation. And I just wanted to share the difference between those with you guys. All right, that's it for the notes today.